Praise God and welcome everybody to the online church. It's Pastor Leroy Carter, Lithonia, Georgia, and we are so glad to have you join us today. Uh, whether you're live with us or whether you are looking in uh, by way of the recording, the important thing is that you join us as we worship God together on the online church. This ministry is blessing people all over the world. You know, I thank God for this ministry. I praise God. I praise God. It's not a mega church. No, no, no. We don't boast a whole lot of numbers. But you know, we serve a mega Jesus who is big in the lives of people. And wherever these our recordings go. God is setting people free. And for those who are coming online, there's something about this online church that keeps drawing people into the presence of the Lord. And God is working mightily in our lives. And so we give honor to the Holy Spirit. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. And you may be tuning in for the first time and saying, and saying well, who is the Holy Spirit? What's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, God's presence, God himself in our midst. He said, where two or more are gathered in my name there, I am in the midst of them. And so we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We can't do anything without you, Holy Spirit. So we give you honor, glory, and praise. And Holy Spirit, if we have grieved you in any way, forgive us. We repent of all of our sins. And so on behalf of Back to Basics Online Church, I want to welcome you. I want to welcome all my friends from Kenya. Welcome all my friends from the nation of Cameroon. I want to welcome all my friends from Nigeria. I want to welcome uh, uh, Bishop David Sander from Nigeria. Bishop Elijah from um, Kenya. I want to welcome all of our friends from Jamaica and, the, and people in the West Indies. Bishop Davis. I want to welcome all of our friends in up in Canada. Praise God. And we just thank God, I want to thank God for all of the people all over the nation who uh, many do not come on live with us, but they look for these recordings every Sunday. They look for these recordings and get blessed. I want to welcome uh, uh, Michelle Everard and her family, and we give thanks to God for the birth of your new baby, Abigail. Hey, Abby, welcome to the world. We want to give a shout out to, to Jackie Fisher. Uh, our reader, who is now uh, working in her local church now. And praise God, we thank God for the many members of the online church who are uh, following the instructions and are locating in local churches now where they can help build up those ministries. That, that's our goal between now and June uh, to help you to locate a local church where you can serve. Ryan Trogley, we welcome you. We welcome so many people. And we thank God. We thank God for those of you who, who uh, listen to these recordings and, and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. These messages are anointed. The preaching is anointed. You may say, well, what do you mean, Pastor? By anointed, it means that the Holy Spirit is in the preaching. He is in the preaching. You know, there's preaching, but there's Holy Ghost preaching. There's preaching, and there's Holy Ghost preaching. There are sermons, but there are Holy Ghost anointed sermons. A lot of people can uh, sit in front of a camera or stand at a pulpit and read a, a, a document and they call that preaching. And some preachers know how to read a document, then stop and hoop and cough and sweat and wipe their brow and go through their gyrations. And the people think they're preaching. But then there's something different. Hallelujah. When you welcome and honor the presence of God himself, the Holy Spirit, and allow him to use you to bring forth the message. That's what my friend Mark Moria does up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's what my friend Gus Roman does in Philadelphia. That's what my friend Derek Brennan does in Philadelphia. That's what my friend James Clements does down here in Atlanta, Georgia. They let the Holy Spirit use them. And, and, and we offer ourselves, like my friend Mark Moria says, I'm just the pipe that the Lord blows through. I present myself to him, and I come before him, and I let the Holy Spirit just blow 
through me. Just say what he wants to say. And I praise God. I thank God for preachers. I thank God for teachers. I thank God for Christy Carpenter and Aaron Carpenter up in Kuna, Idaho. They are members of the online church. And uh, Christy teaches Sunday school there. And Sunday school teachers are very, very important. Sunday school teachers uh, uh, get the, one of the first opportunities <coughs> to teach people about Jesus. So, Christy, you all keep up the great work. You too, Kobe. Praise God. Kobe's one of our students too. Thank God for Dustina. Thank God for Michael and, 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 and their family. Thank God for uh, each and every one of you. Thank God for CK down in Texas. CK, we love you and we praise God. This is a nationwide, worldwide ministry. Thank God for Abel Carr in Cameroon. You know, the Cameroonians are under a lot of oppression. I mean, they, uh, 20 some people were killed in a village in Cameroon last week, two weeks ago. And, and they're under darkness and great oppression. But still, still, Satan cannot snuff out the Christians. They can't kill Jesus in people. And, 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 and we bind that spirit of terror and, and violence and, and, and rebuke that Boko Haram in the name of Jesus. And Cameroonians, you all hang in there. Kenyans, hang in there. Somalians, hang in there. Sudanese, hang in there. People in Afghanistan, hang in there. God knows your situation. The Spirit of God is moving, ladies and gentlemen. You see, in America, we are so caught up in politics. Everything you hear is this political mess that we're in. And so when, when, when the news and the media focuses on the, 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 the politics, then you don't know what's going on in the rest of the world. But all over the world, ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is moving. Melanie Bias, the Spirit of God, is moving all over the earth. We've got testimonies of Muslims getting saved, Muslims getting saved. We're getting testimonies of Muslims having dreams about Jesus. And, and they, they did not get to hear the word of God, but Jesus appears to them in dreams, and they're giving their hearts to Jesus Christ. And while we're playing politics in this country and being bitter and nasty towards one another, God is moving throughout the nations. So I want to encourage you in your situation, wherever you are. I want to encourage you, all of my friends up in Pennsville, New Jersey. I want to encourage all of my friends down in Gray, Georgia, to hold on, keep on trusting in the Lord, and keep your mind fixed on Him. Don't go by what the, the news is saying. Don't go by what television is, is presenting. You go by what the Spirit of the Lord is doing and by the Word of God. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we thank God for the online church. You know, there are a lot of people, a lot of people. They're in their local church today, and many of them are starving, starving, ladies and gentlemen. And then I thank God, many of you, after you starve in your online, in your local church, I thank God that you can find a ministry such as this where you can be fed. And that's what we want to do. We do not want to compete with any fellowship. We want to be a compliment, a blessing. But if you're not getting the word, then we, we want you to come on and get the word of God. And then when God shows you a place where you can go and fellowship, where you can be fed, go there. Be quick to obey God. Why sit up in a church and die and gag and suffocate because your mama went there, or your daddy went there, or your grandfather built the church, or your great-grandfather helped clear the land for the church. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's nothing you can do about it. Your great-great, your great-grandfather can't help you now. Your mama can't help you now. Your daddy can't help you now. If the church has changed from what your daddy visioned it to be, then you ought to get in a place where you can feel the presence of the Lord, experience the presence of the Lord, and grow. I know what I'm talking about. Praise God. Every now and then you got to pack up your stuff and get on to a, a higher ground. Lord, the songwriter said, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet 
on higher ground. And so if you need to plant your feet on higher ground, call on the name of the Lord and ask him to show you how. Well, bless God, let's pray. Father God, we come before you this morning, this beautiful Sunday morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, and we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Lord, we ask that you forgive us of all of our sins, cleanse us of all iniquity, create in us clean hearts, and renew a right spirit within us. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now direct this ministry today. Let your word go forth. Touch the people, God. Heal them where they hurt, Lord, where they need healing and deliverance. Let the Spirit of God reach out and touch people today. Praise God. Lord, we bind Satan and his raging forces. We bind every power, principality, every ruler, spirit, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And now, Father, minister your word to us as we worship you and we thank you in jesus mighty name praise god amen amen well hey brothers and sisters i uh, want to play a song um to introduce our message for today i'm going to talk about the importance of forgiveness the importance of forgiveness so stay on this message is going to bless you it's going to bless you mightily so we're going to uh, take a little praise break with this worship song by our friend uh, kevin wilson down in kentucky kevin wilson said uh, you have my permission to play my songs we don't own the rights the the rights belong to kevin wilson but he said you have my permission to play these songs so we let facebook know we let YouTube know that we have Kevin Wilson's permission to play his song. This song is entitled, A Place of Forgiveness. After that, I'll be back with the Word of God, A Place of Forgiveness. Listen to the words of this song. You 
Praise God, praise God, praise God. I apologize for any echo or rever reverberation in that song, but we'll we fix that uh, for the next time. A uh, place to forgive me. That's uh, Kevin Wilson on the cross. He found a place. God found a place to forgive him. Praise God. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we thank God. Let's look at our scripture, Matthew 6. Matthew 6. And we're looking at verses 9 through 15. Matthew 6, 9 through 15. The Bible says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I've read from Matthew 6, verses 9 through 15. And Father, we thank you again for this word, for your word, for who you are, for your holiness, your righteousness, for blessing us. Now bless us even more as this message goes forth. Speak to the people. Speak through your servant, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I want to talk today about the dangers of unforgiveness and the importance of forgiveness. It is so important that we forgive one another. And in that Lord's Prayer where Jesus taught us how to pray, he taught us uh, to pray for our daily provisions, give us this day our daily bread, and he uh, also said for us to forgive us, forgive those who have sinned against us if we want him to forgive us. And so uh, forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, is conditional. God will forgive, and Jesus has already paid the price for our sins, but we, there's a, a part that we have to do. Jesus died on the cross and made it possible for us to be free from sin. But if we hold a grudge against somebody, listen to this. If we've got bitterness in our heart, listen to this. No, don't, don't go, don't change channels, don't unfriend me, don't uh, cut off the recording. No, listen to this. It will help you. If, if, if we hold bitterness in our heart toward anybody, whether they are living or dead, no matter what they've done to us, if we keep a bitter feeling, anger, resentment, bitterness in our heart against them, that's called unforgiveness. And no matter what we do, we can build skyscrapers, we can feed the hunger, we can build hospitals for the poor we can go on missionary trips we can build churches but if we harbor resentment towards anybody hope you're listening if there's resentment in my heart towards anybody whether that person is living or whether that person is dead if I the scripture says if I regard iniquity in my heart God will not even hear me. Now, in the model prayer in Matthew 6, Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. That's how we're to pray. Ask God for your daily bread, your provisions, your job, your paycheck. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Not only your financial debts, but forgive us uh, if we have hurt anybody. And as we forgive those who hurt us, forgiveness is conditional, ladies and gentlemen. And the, the Bible teaches us, and yes, I will show you where. The Bible teaches that if you do not forgive others, 
and you keep on harboring bitterness in your heart, God will not forgive you. And there are a lot of you out there, and I know you, and I know how I am sometimes. We can harbor bitterness. We can carry resentment. I mean, just the look at we give some people, the way we talk to people. And, you know, you can judge a person whether or not they love you or care about you by their attitude by the way they look at you, by the way they talk to you. You don't need a rocket scientist to know somebody hates your guts. You don't need a rocket scientist to know that somebody doesn't like you. The Bible says, the Bible says test the spirit by the spirit. You husbands and wives, I mean, some of you are pretending. Uh, you children, some of you are pretending you love your parents. Some of you parents are pretending you're loving your children. One of the worst things you could ever say to your child, I wish you were never born. That makes messes a child up for life. I wish you were never born. Or if if a man says to his husband, I regret. If a man, yeah, if a man says if if a man says to his husband, he's corrupt. He needs to repent. But if a man says to his wife, I regret the day I married you. That's the worst thing you can say to her. And if she says to him, I regret the day I married you, she has just messed him up. But there are a lot of couples out there going through the motions of marriage. And, and, and people know if you don't love them, if you don't care about them, and you know when they don't care about you. A lot of you are loved on payday every other Friday. You get some good loving. You get some good, good loving every other Friday. But then what about those other days? I mean, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, ladies and gentlemen. We are not ignorant. And, and some of the worst bitterness that we can experience is the unforgiveness of family members. Family members can hurt you more than anybody else in the world. I know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. I know the members of my family who are <clears throat> real, and I know the ones who are the pretenders. The real ones, they stick with you through thick and thin, in good times, in bad times. They help you up the rough side of the mountain and on the downhill slide. They're, they're with you. They will never forsake you. That's why I'm so glad my son Wes is on with us today. Wes is real. He's pure. He, he knows where we've come from. And, uh, and his love is the kind of love a father uh, enjoys from a son. But then Wes knows we have some family members, uh, and his siblings are the, are the same way he is. But we've got some others out there. You can't trust them. Uh, they're, they're conniving. They're devious. And they only want to use you when they can get something out of you. We've got some bitter folks. I'm talking about my family. We've got some bitter folks in my family. They pretend they love you, and then they talk about you like a dog. Uh, and and, and uh, I just experienced this recently last week with the, the funeral of my older brother. My older brother, all the resentment, all the resentment. Now, yeah, I'm going to lay it out there because it's real. All the bitterness, the resentment, and, 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 and previous members of the family who have passed, and, 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 and we've got cousins and aunts and uncles, nephews and nieces, even siblings uh, who hate one another and, and cannot get along. And this is of the devil, ladies and gentlemen. It's of the devil. It's satanic. And then I've got some members of my family. They know how to go to other members of the family and spread dirt and spread division and spread confusion and, and because they have unforgiveness in their hearts. And you know what? Some of them turkeys think they're entitled, that we're, we owe them something. And I don't owe any of you anything. And if many, any of my family members are listening to this recording, I don't owe you a thing but to love you. And I love you. I forgive you for anything you've done to me. And I hope you forgive me of anything I've ever done to you. But I refuse to buy that package that Satan's trying to uh, uh, disperse. Uh, he's even trying to give it away. I refuse to accept it. I don't owe any of you anything. Many of you have made your choices. Many of you, you have uh, chosen to walk the walk of bitterness and resentment. Many of you spread lies, and many of you are you're just plain corrupt. You need to get saved. And I'm talking about the, some of you who go to church. Some of you are leaders in your churches. You go to church, but you're just corrupt. Under that uh, 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 
uh, makeup and that camouflage is, is a bitter heart that needs to repent before God. Now, Wes, I just told him the way it is. I told it the way it is and let the chips fall where they may. And I'm just speaking of my family, and I know your family, and those of you listening on a recording, you all got people in your family the same way. You can't trust them. You can't, you can't turn your back on them. And if you don't give them what they ask you for, they will talk about you like you're a dog, and they think they're entitled, that you owe them something. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible teaches us to owe no man anything but to love them. And that's what, that's the way I roll. I owe you nothing but to love you. I'm not going to hold any bitterness toward you. And some of you, you keep on talking about me like I'm a dog. But in the long run, you're going to have to repent. If you plan on going to heaven, you're going to have to repent. And if I plan on going to heaven, I cannot hold any bitterness against you, whether you're a family member or whether you're a stranger or whether you're somebody I know. If I harbor in my heart any bitterness towards you, any resentment, then I am a sinner. And, and I can be a pastor of the church. I can be a bishop. I can be an apostle. I can build churches. I can uh, minister to thousands of people. But if I have iniquity in my heart and I will not confess it and, and get away from it and walk away from it, then I am nothing but a big, phony, a hypocrite. And I'm addressing all you hypocrites out there, all of you hypocrites out there. You grin in somebody's face, and you like the song. Uh, the OJ sang a song years ago. They smile in your face. All the time they want to take your place. The backstabbers, the backstabbers. And, and up, in, up in Philly, they say the backstabbers. They smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place. They're backstabbers. They, they pretend to love you. And, so, and, and God addresses this. Jesus addressed this in the Lord's Prayer, that if we do not forgive others, don't expect him to for, forgive us. Well, show me where he says that part in Scripture. Okay, look at uh, saying the same Scripture, Matthew 6, verses 14 to 15. Ah, uh, gotcha. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. It means if you forgive them, no matter what they have done to you, forgive them. Forgive them. Just say, I forgive you. I forgive you. And let it go. Walk away from it. Don't entertain any more bitterness. Verse 15 says, but, listen, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, Neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. If you don't forgive them, your Heavenly Father is not going to forgive you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a sad day. Uh, and, 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 and in my family, and it may be a sad day in your family to see someone die in your family a loved one, could be a spouse, could be a, a sibling, could be a child, to see them die and, and, and know that they're dead, no longer here, and know that your relationship with them was not a good relationship because they had a bitter spirit towards you. That hurt, Wes, that hurts. That is very painful when you know that they had something against you because you were not yield to the way they wanted you to yield. And, and uh, I've experienced that with, my, with members of my family. I'm a preacher. I'm born again. I'm saved. I've been blessed with the privilege of the new birth. Uh, God snatched me out of a life of sin, and that's the life I've been living for 51 years. It's 51 years this year. I've been living a life uh, 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 repenting of my sins. Now, I'm not saying I have not been good all those years. I've done some wrong things, but I've been quick to forgive. And, and to harbor bitterness is a terrible thing. But I've got people in my family, they've been harboring bitterness, resentment for over 50 years. And I've got people in my family, ladies and gentlemen, who, who I mean, they're getting they're too old to act stupid like they're acting. Too old, old as dirt, acting stupid. But, hey, uh, after 50 years, it's, you should be changing your attitude towards somebody. I've got people in my family, they hate my guts because I don't drink with them anymore. I don't smoke dope with them anymore. I don't, I don't cuss with, 
with them anymore. I don't talk about my neighbors with them anymore because I've been born again. I've been changed by the Spirit of God. And and there are members of my family. Some are deceased now. Yep, they left here with bitterness in their heart, but I forgave them. I forgave them. They left here with a bad taste in their mouth toward me because when I got saved, my life changed. I told them I'm not going to be talking about people anymore. I'm not going to be condemning people. I'm not going to be talking about preachers. I'm not going to be putting people down. I'm not going to be belittling people. I refuse to do what you do. And so my walk 51 years ago, my walk took a new step. I began going, I'm telling my son Wesley this now, I began walking in a new direction, and, and, and a lot of people in our family did not like me because my walk with Christ led me in a new direction. And there are still some, still some living hate my guts because I take a stand against their lifestyle. I stand against the things they're doing. I love them, and I try to express that love to them, but they reject it. But I, I'm going to keep on loving them, and I forgive them. And, and whether or not, and, 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 and some of you are my friends or so-called friends. If I don't care if you don't love me. I'm going to keep on praising God and worshiping God and being humble, and I will forgive you and, and walk the walk that God says walk in this word. It's this word, ladies and gentlemen. It's this word. And so each of you, I'm addressing people. I know I'm addressing people today and, li and people who are listening to this recording. You've got people in your life who resent you. You've got people in your life who, who openly attack you and try to get you to uh, 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 put your Jesus on the shelf and, 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 and put the dukes up. You, you've got people in your life who, who don't like your walk with Christ and then there are people in your life who are jealous of you because you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I say to you, keep on walking with the Lord and forgive those who hate you. Jesus said, forgive those who despitefully, forgive those who hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. And that's the way we are to roll because the scripture tells us, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And I refuse, ladies and gentlemen, to end this life on a bitter note, on a sour note. I refuse to leave planet Earth with unforgiveness in my heart towards anybody, living or dead. I don't care who they are or what they have done. I forgive them. I refuse to leave planet Earth with bitterness and resentment in my heart. Now, you can, you can, you can keep on being bitter and resentful, and, and, and you can fool people, but you can't fool God. People know whether you like them or not. They can tell by the words that come out of your mouth, by the look in your eye, by your attitude. People are not stupid. We test the spirit by the spirit. But, ladies and gentlemen, we've been born again by the spirit of God, and so let us walk the walk. Let us not just talk the talk, but let us walk the walk. We're talking today about the importance of forgiveness. Let me read you another passage of Scripture. This is from Matthew 18, and I want to take a look at uh, verses 21 <clears throat> through 35. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Now, Jesus was saying you don't have to count the unforgiveness the times you forgive until you reach 490, no, he means you keep on forgiving people, no matter what they've done to you. The scripture says, starting again in verse 23, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Let's imagine... Somebody owed this man $10,000, one of his servants. But for as much as he had not to pay, 
his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all, all that he had and payment be made. So the man the servant couldn't pay him, so the man sold him off as a slave and, uh, and, and, and his wife and his children and all that he had to get his money back. Verse 26, the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Sound like some of us when the bill collectors call for the bills, for the money they owe, we owe them. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. When the man fell on his knees and on his face and begged, uh, his master, forgive me of my debt. I'm going to pay you, man. You know, you know the many people who say, I'll pay you, man. Just be patient. I'm going to pay you. Well, <clears throat> the, the master had compassion and loosed him from that debt. He forgave him of the $10,000 that he owed him. Verse 28, but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him $100 or 100 pence, or ten dollars, or twenty dollars, or whatever, owed him amount an amount of money, and this same servant who had been forgiven of his debt, he laid hands on the guy who owed him some money. Verse twenty-eight took him by the throat, grabbed him by the throat, ladies and gentlemen, and said, "Pay me what you owe me. Give me my money." And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and and begged him, saying, "Have patience with me." and I will pay thee all. Verse 30, and he would not, but went and cast the man into prison till he should pay his debt. Now, this guy had just had uh, his master forgave him of $10,000 in debt. But yet this other, this man who owed, this man who was forgiven, uh, this man owed him some money. He went and grabbed the guy by the throat, pay me my money. And the guy didn't have the money. The guy got on his knees, begged him, uh, 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 give me some more time. I'll, I'll get the money. And no, he locked him up, had him thrown in jail. Verse 30, 31. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt. Because thou desirest me, shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Look, I forgave you of your sins. I forgave you of your money you owe me, and I cancel your debt. Now, shouldn't you have had some compassion on this guy? Verse 34, and his Lord was wroth. That means he was mad, angry, and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Not only did he have him locked up, but he delivered him to the tormentors, who were professional tormentors, who knew how to get the blood out of him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. Listen, this is, this is to you and to me. If we don't forgive people, this is what God will do for us. So likewise, this is Jesus saying this. Verse 35 of Matthew 19 so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Jesus is saying to us the importance of forgiveness. If you do not forgive people who have sinned against you, who have offended you, who have hurt you, if you don't forgive them, then uh, uh, God the Father is going to turn you over to the tormentors. Now, I'm talking to some of you pastors, some of you preachers, some of you puffed up deacons, some of you stewards, some of you bishops, some of you people, nobody can tell you anything because you know it all. The word of God is speaking to you that if you do not forgive people of their sins, then God will turn you over to the tormentors. And there are a lot of people listening. Some of you are listening live. Uh, you, you, you've had bad relationships with people. Uh, there are some of, some, some, some of us here, uh, we've had marital problems, or some of you had a uh, bad marriage or a divorce or a relationship uh, with an old girlfriend, an old boyfriend, and you never resolved that relationship. Some of you have had family quarrels and, and bitterness. 
Some of you did not get along with your mom and dad. Some of you did not get along with your children or your siblings. And, and, and they're gone, but you're still harboring bitterness. You're still blaming them for your problems. The Lord is saying, get out of it. Get away from it. Forgive them. Repent. Get away from it. Because if we continue in sin, God's grace cannot help us. Well, give me a scripture on that. Yes, uh, uh, Romans chapter 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? Ladies and gentlemen, if we continue pretending, and a lot of you are pretending, you're pretending everything's all right, and deep down inside of you there's a raging storm, there's a bitterness bubbling up like a volcano because you've got hatred against a former spouse or against a, a sibling or against a member of your family or against a teacher, or against a boss, or an employee, or against a church, or bitterness against a pastor or a preacher. You're carrying, and I know people who carry that bitterness to the grave. And yet, yet, yet the, the sad thing is how people can be so deceived. You go to their funeral, ladies and gentlemen, you go to their funeral, and, 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 and each of us has been there, and people are crying and boo-hooing, and the pastor preaches his best sermon uh, uh, to impress the family, and, 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 and they talk about, uh, I'll see you in the good old by and by when I get to heaven. Uh, uh, don't let them crown Jesus until I get there, and I'll see you when I get there. And then, and then uh, here on the anniversary of, of that person's death, uh, a lot of people say, rip, R-I-P, rest in peace. I don't say rest in peace to anybody. I don't say it to anybody because I don't really know if they're resting in peace. Because if they did not live according to the word of God, I don't care what kind of life they, they live. You're listening to me, Melanie. You're listening to church. Uh, I don't care what kind of life they live, what kind of pretense they put up. Uh, the church may act, give them accolades and people may say they were great, but if the Bible says if you regard iniquity in your heart, God will not even hear you. And the Bible says, lest there be found in us any root of bitterness, whereby many be defiled. Don't go to the grave, ladies and gentlemen, with bitterness in your heart. Don't continue in sin. Don't try to impress people. Don't try to fake it with God. God knows if your heart is clean. God knows if your heart is clean. If you still have anger in you, if you still have bitterness in you, and I'm preaching to myself too, if you still have resentment in you towards anybody, a, a, a spouse or a, 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 a family member, a sibling or a friend, even an enemy, if you carry bitterness and resentment in your heart to them, and if you don't confess that bitterness, and if you don't release that person by forgiving them, don't think, please, 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 I beg you, please, please. They, they shout at your funeral. They throw flowers at you. They throw rice at your casket. They will build a monument to you. They put a headstone on you put all kinds of phrases on your mount, on your headstone, but if you carry bitterness in your heart, it's all in vain. It's all in vain. God will not even hear you. You can fake it with people, but you can't fake it with God. I pray, and I feel a sneeze coming on. I'm trying not to sneeze right now, but uh, if, if you're carrying bitterness in your heart, get rid of it. Repent of it. Confess it. Anybody, anybody you're angry with, anybody you have resentment with, forgive them now and forgive them forevermore. And when Satan tries to bring that rage or that anger back to you, you rebuke the, rebuke the devil. Just like I rebuke this sneeze in the name of Jesus. You rebuke the devil and don't go along with that. Uh, first time. <laughs> it's the allergy season here in Georgia, ladies and gentlemen. First and second time I've ever sneezed on, on, on camera. Well, praise God. Bless God. 
Well, bless God. But don't carry, don't carry, don't carry bitterness and anger in your heart. <laughs> Praise God. The weatherman said this early allergy season here in Georgia. Wow. You know what I'm talking about, Melanie Bias. Anyway, praise God. The message is this. Please, do not harbor bitterness in your heart. Don't. Don't leave this life with anger towards anyone. Forgive. Don't, look, look. Don't miss out on family fellowship. I've missed out on fellowship with a lot of family members because of their resentment, their refusal to, to, to acknowledge God, their their determination to walk their walk, they're going to keep walking. And, 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 and the thing that hurts about family members, even in marriages, they just shut you out and they go along pretending all is well. They pretend all is well, but in their heart of hearts, they hate your guts. And they're only cutting themselves off. Don't let them poison you. Don't let Satan poison you. Don't let anybody or anything steal your joy. This joy that we have, the world didn't give it to us. Your family didn't give it to us. Your husband didn't, didn't give it to you. Your wife didn't give it to you. Your children didn't give it to you. Your siblings didn't give it to you. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Don't let anybody steal your joy. No, no, even when they try to blackmail you, when they try to frame you, when they try to set you up with lies, when they even try to poison your name and, 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 and poison you, your relationship with others, don't let it take place. You keep on walking with the Lord. You keep on praising God. Don't let anything touch you. And God will handle them. God will handle the situation. But your test is, your test is to keep on loving God no matter what. And ladies and gentlemen, I've made up my mind. I have made up my mind. I'll put it out there. I'm not going to let any one of you rob me of my joy. I'm looking at you. I'm not going to let any one of you rob me of my joy. You see, God has brought me from a mighty long way. God picked me up out of a, a world of sin and shame 51 years ago. A world of sin and shame. Drugs, alcohol, adultery, uh, fighting, uh, 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 violence, uh, corruption, and he breathed into me new life and gave me the new birth, the second birth. And Jesus Christ became my Savior, my Lord, and my King. And then the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost. And there is nothing you can offer me that's going to be better than Jesus in me, the hope of glory. And no words, no weapon formed against me or you shall prosper. Keep on walking with the Lord. I'm talking about the importance of forgiveness. And don't fall into that trap where you get angry with someone and let a root of bitterness develop in you. Because if you get angry and let them hurt you, then if you don't, if you don't forgive them, then that hurt becomes anger. Then the anger becomes bitterness, and then the bitterness becomes unforgiveness, and then unforgiveness leads to death, and a lot of people are dying. I've had more friends die this year than last year and previous years, and this is only February. I, some of my best friends whom I've grown up with died. A couple of them died last week. I pray that they were saved. I pray that they committed their lives to Jesus Christ. And I pray that they forgave people who hurt them in any way. That hair that was in my nose, I got it. <laughs> that, that thing causing that sneeze, I got it. Praise God. 
and 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 just like that that one hair can trigger an explosion in my in my head and sneezes one sin can throw you off balance get rid of it confess your sins don't let any anger any bitterness rule in your heart because the scripture says if i regard iniquity in my heart if i know this sin in my heart god won't even hear me and i want god to hear me and i want god to hear you praise god well bless god we've talked about our forgiveness so uh, please forgive everybody who has hurt you no matter what they did forgive them some of them are dead you can't go to them now but forgive them uh, some of them are alive and and it's wise that you don't approach some of them but forgive them you don't have to hang out with them just say I forgive them Lord and keep on walking the walk and 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 if you have offended anybody ask them to forgive you ask God to forgive you and it's wise that you not approach them for ask their forgiveness through God from a distance and and cleanse your heart ladies and gentlemen God creating us a clean heart renew a right spirit within us in the name of Jesus and we praise you Lord and we thank you father in Jesus mighty name hey let's listen to another song by our friend Kevin Wilson and this song is called born again Praise God. Praise God. Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, from Kentucky. Praise God. Spiritual High Ministries, London, Kentucky. And you can order his CDs by going on Kevin S. Wilson Band. 
Webs.com, Kevin S. Wilson Band. Webs.com, or send me an email and I'll connect you with Kevin. He's a good old guy. He's a good old guy, very humble man, Kevin Wilson. And um, I thank God for our friendship. Praise God. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, you going country and western. Man, that's good old music. That's good old music. Melanie, that's good old music. Praise God. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you're uh, listening and any of you listening to this recording, you're not born again, you want to be saved, ask the Lord Jesus Christ today, right now, to come into your life and be your Savior, Lord, God, and King. Or if you're saved and you, you're backslidden, ask God to forgive you of your backsliding. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and, and, and recommit your life to the Lord. And then forgive anyone and everyone who's ever hurt you in any way and ask God to forgive you of your sins. God will do that. He's a mighty good God that we serve. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, before we get off, I want to uh, give you a great offer. I'm giving this book away this week, Faith Visions. Um, and actually, I don't have any more hard copy hard copies of this. This is the only hard copy I have, and this belongs to Jackie, and I better put it back on her bookshelf before she gets home from our local church. Uh, I borrowed it, so you can know it's the hard copy. It's 124 pages, 128 pages called Faith Visions, and I'm offering this free as a PDF, as an e-book to anyone who emails me. I'll send this to you for free. Um, and here you'll see how God speaks to you, how he gives you a vision for your life, and what to do when God speaks to you, and how to get your vision to come through. And many of you have had visions from the Lord, and God spoke a word to you, and you haven't seen it happen yet. Well, this book will tell you how to make it happen, and, and how God is faithful. And Wes, it talks about all about how God gave us the vision for the church in Chester, the land, how God said, I'm going to give you this land for a dollar and I want you to build me a church and my son realized remembers how people laughed at us and said your dad's crazy man he done lost his mind but we stuck with God's plan and uh, that story's in here and other things that God has promised and he fulfilled his promise so when God speaks to you whether it's about your marriage or your family or a job or a ministry when God makes a promise to you he will keep the promise but this book will show you areas where you might have come short. And it might even be unforgiveness that has kept your faith, faith vision from coming forth. Well, this is free. I would like to send this to you as a PDF book, as an e-book. Uh, send me an email, and it's free for you. Also, this, this month is Black History Month, and I'll send you a copy of my book. I'll send you a hard copy the hard copy of Black Heroes of the Bible, new edition for any gift to the ministry. And also, uh, I'll send you a hard copy of uh, my book, The Giants Are Back, for any, any blessing to the ministry. Just send me an email uh, or go on the website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. Any, any uh, gift to the ministry, I'll send you uh, one, one of these and if you request both of these free books, both of these books, I'll send you both of them. Okay, if you want all three, I'll send you these two. And the um, PDF version of Faith Visions, okay? You get Faith Visions without any gift to the ministry. Just call me. You want it, I'll send it to you as a PDF. But uh, for the hard copy books, uh, your gift to the ministry is going to help me with the mailing expenses Praise God. Well, bless God. Bless God. We're not in this ministry to make money. We're in this ministry to minister to God's people, to help the Holy Spirit to save souls, and that God will keep you. Praise God. So we're going to uh, close out our recording, but we want you to stay online, say hello to us, and see. Uh, we want to see if you have any prayer needs. We want to pray for you, and then we'll uh, I'll say goodbye. So uh, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for being with us. And we praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to...